Today's verses are from Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 through 8. We see in them that sin has advanced greatly in the 10 generations and the 1,500 plus years since Adam and Eve first introduced it. So let's begin with verse 5. The Lord saw the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, if that isn't total human depravity, what is? Okay, let's look at verse 6 here. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. Now, properly speaking, God does not regret nor grieve. These phrases are example of what is called anthropopathic or anthropomorphic language. And this is God's view of what man is doing. Now, the man, or excuse me, the mind of God, we cannot fully understand. He is far above us. We find that told to us in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. I'll read that. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. You know, we don't object when we ascribe to God that he is love, but it seems incomprehensible when we also say that God is hate. And both of these yet are ways of our expressing what God is doing so that we can understand it, anthropopathic language. Now, verse 7, And so the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the earth, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens, for I am sorry that I have made them. Now, so the Lord said, you know, he spoke things into existence. He can also speak them out of existence. The phrase, I will blot out. This is translated literally as wipe out or as to clean off a surface that is filthy. Now, what else do we have here? Man and animals, creeping things, and birds. The consequences of moral evil extend far beyond the perpetrators. We can find similar examples of this in Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 4, Zephaniah chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, and also in the destruction of Achan's family recorded in Joshua chapter 7, verses 24 and 25. Verse 8, But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. But when you see that word in the Bible, it modif everything that follows it modifies or negates what went before it. But Noah found favor. Here we are shown the mercy that God shows and also the security that life will be preserved as well as restored. Now in some of the translations, it shows this word instead of favor as grace. And if so, then this is the first mention of grace in the Bible. So what can we conclude from this, these verses? Well, they describe the extent and consequences of moral evil. So the scripture says, for then and also for now. Well, if this is true, why are not people aware of this? Well, two reasons, ignorance or denial. The book of Hebrews, it tells us that the consciousness of our inerrant evil is only made known to us by the word of God. Now, let me read a couple verses there to close us out. This is from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Thanks for watching today.